It's five o'clock on a Wednesday and it's time for Craig and Ryland's Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. And welcome to another review show. We've got four items including a trick that might be a contender for the best trick of 2021. Like this trick is absolutely amazing. Uh, we're going to be reviewing four products. We're going to be performing everything that we review. Am and I'm going doing to the best? Oh, what's the best trick of 2021? Yeah, I think you are, yeah, yeah. You know which one oh, I'm talking about. Yeah, and uh, we're going to open with that. We're going to do that first of all. So we've got a couple of really terrible tricks on this review show, but we're going to open up I'm with something one. that's... I'm doing, I'm doing a terrible one. You are doing a terrible one. Let's start off with one that's really good. Okay, so the first item that we are reviewing is Mag uh, Magnet O uh, by Henry, uh, Henry Harrius. Now, Henry Harrius is famous for doing a lot of different Rubik's Cube stuff. He did Cube to Chocolate. He did the Venom Cube, your, your, one of your favourite tricks. Uh, Insta Cube, whole bunch of Cube stuff. Rubik's 360, Rubik's Dream. Uh, but this is a deviation from his normal Cube stuff. This is a demonstration in telekinesis. And one of the best tricks of 2021. It is an amazing trick. Now, we'll talk to you about so why it's so amazing in a minute. But first of all, do you want to dem the routine, Ryan? Yeah. Full presentation and everything. Yeah. Right, go for it. Right, I know Scarlet Witch, but my favourite my favorite Avenger character, my favourite hero is Captain America. You do love Captain America. Yeah, but we are, we're going to do something on Scarlet Witch. She's got like, she can use, she can she can move stuff with the power of her mind. She can move stuff with the power of her mind. That is right. Yeah. yeah. So we try and do something something the same. You're telling me you can move things with the power of your mind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What it? what we got? What we got? Well, I've got I've got a sharpie cap that I'm going to try and balance. Okay. And I'm going to try and balance a coin on top. Okay. So. I'll move my hands off the table as well. There you go. There we okay. Go. And I'm gonna put, uh, put glass over it. Okay, so we can't go anywhere near the coin. We can't do anything with the coin, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna try and move it. You're gonna move the coin. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Go on then. Don't believe it. Oh my gosh, you're Scarlet Witch. <laughs> he can move things with the power of his mind. You are Professor X, aren't you? Do you want to try? I can do that. Yeah. Isn't this like something that you have to like spend years studying and you have to get in touch with your inner chi? No. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Go on then, yeah. You're balancing it again. Yeah. Okay. So how do I do this, Ryan? Because you looked as if you were like really in pain when you were doing that, do I? Yeah, you've got to see, you've got to believe that you can move it. I've got to believe that I can move it. Yeah, starting from now. I believe, Ryland. Ryland, I believe. Nothing's happening, buddy. I believe. I'm believing. <laughs> I have the power. I have the power. <laughs> you have the power. I have the power. What you just saw I there. Have the power. What you just saw there was Magnet O, and oh my gosh, what an amazing routine this is. This is the best version of moving something with your mind that I have ever seen. How good is this? Good. First of all, it's incredibly easy. How fast did you learn this? <laughs> uh, one, two, three. Like literally two minutes, right? Five seconds. Five seconds. <laughs> and what was really embarrassing is I was practicing it. He got up. I got up before him and I was practicing it. And he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, let me show you this. And I was struggling with balancing the coin on top of this. I was like, ah, this isn't going on. I'm sure. And then I got it after a while, but because there's no, you are actually balancing a coin on the thing. And he was just like, let me do it. And you did it straight away, which, which was really annoying. <laughs> That's the hardest part of this routine, balancing the no, coin. No, it's not. What do you mean? No, That's it's the easiest part. Okay, for you maybe. But out of everything, this is the hardest part. Now, what this no, allows you to do, what this allows you to do is take a coin, and just like you saw Ryland do, it allows you to take move a coin. Move it with the power of your mind. <laughs> move it with the power of your mind. Now, this is a very high-tech device. This has electronics built into it, uh, and you have a remote control. You can do it close-up if you can. Oh, you can, of course you can. Yeah. Um, this has got rem uh, the uh, electronics built into it. It's, it switches off and switches on here. How you switch it on and switch it off is brilliant. The battery life is amazing. We've been tinkering around with this for an entire day and we haven't needed to recharge it. Um, when you put it down, because of how it's built, it will always stand up nice and, nice and straight. 
And Is that then, even normal Sharpie or normal Sharpie, bro? Yeah, and then, and then you just balance the coin on top of it, you cover it up with the glass. Uh, when you're not using it, you switch it off, you put it in your pocket, you reset, ready to go again. Uh, it's got an auto <laughs> shut off function. So that after five minutes, if you put it in your pocket and you forget to switch it off, after five minutes, it'll switch itself off to reduce battery time, which I thought was really, really good. Um, and how Henry suggests you do it is just by having the gimmick in palm and you just take a, uh, a pen out of your pocket, you just pretend to take the lid off and you say, look, let me show you something with the lid. You put this away, you do the thing, you balance it, you do the trick, and then at the end, I'm not gonna do it, we're not gonna do it again right now, but when, you, when you've finished, you just take your pen back out um, and you literally just pretend to put the uh, the lid back on or whatever and you put this away and that just goes south for the winter and that's reset. So it's a really commercial trick. Now, the download is about half an hour long. I love the idea of putting a glass over it, but think about it from a commercial point of view. Everything's examinable. Everything's examinable at the beginning. Everything's examinable at the end. And oh, I during think it's very good. So do I, I love it, right? And that moment when... Uh, when when the the, when the coin like oh, so good. Now Henry's got a couple of different presentational <coughs> ideas for this. One of the ideas he had, which was really good, was setting it up and having it there and having the coin on top of it, and then getting a torch light to light it and using the shadow of your finger to push the coin off. Uh, and saying, hey, my shadow can actually move things and using the shadow of your finger to push the coin off, which is really good. Now, the remote control that comes with it, it's either set for a seven second delay, which is how you were doing it, which means that your hands can be here when you, uh, when you actually have the thing drop or you can do it as an instantaneous drop. Henry also talks about using this thing as a thumper. So if you've got a stooge in the audience, you can be holding onto your pen and uh, let's say someone's picked a card, they can give you the information as long as they're holding the remote control. How I plan on using this, and this is my idea for it, is doing it the way that Rylan just did it, and then say, well, let's see if we can try something different. And, and setting it up one more time, so setting it up on there, setting the coin up on here, covering up with the glass, and then having somebody pick a card, having someone select a card, have it lost in the pack, but control it to about 20 cards down. So I know where, uh, where it is. I know how many cards on the top of the deck it is. And then having them deal the cards onto the table one at a time. And then I've got the remote control and I can do the immediate drop so that as I'm turning it over one at a time, when I get to the card that's their card or the next card or whatever, um, the drop happens and the coin drops at that point. And it's kind of like, well, hang on a second, the coin just dropped right there. What was the name of your card? Boom, was that your card? It was absolutely fantastic. So you could do it as a really nice card revelation, which I think is really good. Um, I also like the idea, and, and, and using that idea, you could do it as revelation, as a- um, I agree. A, yeah, it's right. You could do it as a revelation to an ESP symbol as well. You know, you do stuff with Zener cards. Yeah. You could have somebody pick a, uh, an ESP symbol and you can have the ESP, you can have this set up so that when you get to the correct ES symbol, ESP symbol, it drops. Or even, you know what you could do? You could use it with a mem deck. So if somebody names a card, Sarah, name a card. Seven of diamonds. Seven of diamonds in Mnemonica. Seven of diamonds is... Three. Position three. So what you could do, I mean, that's a bit of a rubbish one because that would happen really quickly. Um, but you could literally just go one, two... No, you could you know, like this. Well, you would get them to deal. That's what I think. You would get them to deal the cards. And you'll know when the Seven of Diamonds is coming because the one before the Seven of Diamonds is the... Two of Hearts. Two of Hearts. So you could see... Let's use a different one. Let's say it's Jack of Hearts. That's position number... 20. 20. So 19 is the... Two of diamonds. Two of diamonds. So they're dealing. You see the two of diamonds. You know it's coming up. And you as they put the two... I know, right? As they're doing the... As they deal the two of diamonds, you press the button and boom, that thing drops. Think about that. Think about that. They name a card. You put the deck down in front of them. They name a card. You set this well, up underneath a glass. 52. Well... You have to deal very Hopefully they don't, right? But you, you um, have to deal very, very easy. Or you could cut the deck and you could just do it on the four of clubs because then you'd know that the next card would be the card. Or no, 52 is the nine of diamonds. 51 is the... Ace of hearts. Ace of hearts. So you could do you it on the ace... You completely forgot 
got an amender, haven't you? Of course I haven't. Ace of heart. Give me yeah. a number. I'm, we're not getting into this now. Um, so the point I'm trying to make, if you weren't so annoying, is that you could think about that for an effect. You could have the deck of cards on the table. You don't touch it. You set this up underneath the glass. You have someone name a card. You don't touch the cards. You deal the cards one at a time, or they deal the cards one at a time. And when they deal the cards, this thing just falls off at one point. And you go, well, hang on, that's fooled off right there. That's fallen off right there. What's the name of your card that you said? King of Hearts, which is position number... 35. And then you just turn it He's over. completely forgotten. I'm testing you. You're seven. Your memory's rubbish. And you're eight now, sorry. My bad. Um, there you go. Look, this is great. There's a couple of ideas to do with it. It's super practical. It's an instant reset. It's hold a charge for ages. I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. And I it's amazing. Agree. And it can be done on any table. You don't want a close-up pad. I do pad. not think it's terrible. I think it's good. So take, give me a percentage. I'm giving it 100%. I think it's amazing. Uh, 100. Let oh. me just type it in. I'll tell you one more thing as well, by the way. Zoom shows. Henry talks about Zoom shows. It's brilliant for Zoom shows because you set this up underneath a glass and then you walk away. You go to the very back of the room and you pick somebody on the Zoom show and you have them touch the screen. And when they touch the screen, the thing just drops and it's like they're doing this themselves through the Zoom meeting. Oh my gosh, how good would that be? So there you go. Uh, really good, 100%. Highly recommended. Uh, it's available now and I suggest everybody go and buy one. Okay, so next up on the review show, we have Switch Velope. Switch Velope by Craziest. Now, that's the same people that uh, did the corner trick. I'm starting to hate them. I'm <laughs> starting to hate them. Um, well, yeah, I mean, they, we weren't impressed with their first trick. Uh, this is this is the second one that I've seen. This is number three. We must have missed number two. Um, I'm going to perform it for you, and then we're going to talk what we think about it. So uh, we're going to bring the camera a bit closer, and I'm going to uh, show you what this looks like and what it does. Right, okay, so Rai, we are going to do something with a pack of playing cards. I should also point out to you that as well as this deck of cards, I have a little envelope over here. Uh, that's going to be the envelope of mystery. Ooh, ah, envelope of mystery. Uh, take card, take a number card for me, buddy. Take a number card, one with a number on. And when you have the card, take it out and show the camera. Do not show me. You got it? Yeah. And take the pen. Oh, and what I want you to do is write your name on the face of the card in big letters. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm not going to look. You done? Yeah. Good stuff. Blow it. Make sure it's dry. Um, we'll put the lid on the pen. So now we have a signed card. That card is completely unique to you. Would you agree? Yeah. Pop the card back there. The card back there. That's great. Actually, you know what? We'll put the card back a uh, in this half. And what I want you to do is shuffle that card into the pack. If you can do that, that would be uh, wonderful. Give the cards a shuffle. Make sure it's all mixed up. Very good. And also, don't forget the, the envelope over here. It's very important you remember the envelope, okay? Yeah. And then when you've done that, take that packet and, and, and cut it into two piles, if you could. That'd be good. Okay. Uh, so cut that packet into two piles and then put the card back. And you drop some on the floor, but don't worry about it. That's absolutely fine. It's cool. At least we know it's lost. So just put that somewhere in the middle. Just cut, put everything in. Yeah, just put the whole thing. There you go. I knew we'd get there in the end. Right, okay. Now, this envelope has been over here from the very beginning. Would you agree? Yeah. And inside this envelope, let me show you, there's a folded up card. Can you see that? One card and one card only. Now, check this out. This card has been in there from the very, very beginning. One card, one card only. You're not going to believe it. But inside, it's actually your nine of diamonds with your name on it. So there we go. That is Switch Velope by the craziest. Uh, <laughs> you really don't like this, do you? You really don't like it. Look, let me explain why I don't like it. First of all, if you saw the first review we did for a product by, uh, by Craziest, you, you probably saw that I was very annoyed because I couldn't even get access to the instructions because they printed out a piece of paper with a YouTube link on and that's it. They still got the YouTube link, but at least they took my advice and now they've got a QR code on there as well. So I could at least watch the explanation. I really wish I hadn't. It's a 15 minute explanation. First of all, for any magic producers out there, if you're gonna produce an explanation video that's gonna run anything like 10, 15, 20 minutes, and you are going to use the same piece of music on a loop that runs two minutes and it loops every two minutes so that you listen to the same piece of music over and over again, make it so that that piece of music is not so irritating that you want to get a rusty spoon and literally scoop your own eyes out. Just 
If you're gonna have background music, make it background music. Now, uh, the, the tutorial... Um, I'm just gonna stay here with a thumbs down. Is that your general viewpoint on this trick? Um, the tutorial goes through how you do this, but the thing is, this is... 15 minutes is not that long. It's not that long, but there's not that much to it, to be perfectly honest. I will say to you, this is one of the fiddliest tricks that I have ever seen. It is so fiddly. The reason I actually did the control that I did, and they don't explain really how to do the control. They just tell you to control the card. But the reason I explained it is that the, the reason I did the control I did is because I needed that half of the pack to be shuffled thoroughly. So there was no attention on this half where the selected card is. So I could do what I needed to do. Because what I had to do is fold the card in half kind of like a half a mercury fold which they didn't really explain then you have to steal the card underneath the envelope but here's the thing and i'm gonna i'm not exposing this but to tell you this envelope cannot be examined uh, you put the envelope down at the table in the beginning and you say there's something in there and that's fine um but you can't have the envelope examined afterwards oh, i think this is terrible i know you do right but it, it just gets worse for so many different Don't reasons you agree but, about but you in order for this trick to work right not oh mommy's <laughs> mommy's telling him off and saying move your hand out of the way now um <laughs> i wouldn't do you look at the look on her face right here's the thing right in order for this trick to work and do what it needs to do and in order to have a card in there that you apparently pull out, you need to have something on the back of the envelope. Um, and then what you have to do is once the, the thinking, there's no thinking behind this. This has not been created by somebody who actually works in the real world. Because once you've actually stolen the, the thing, if you could just then pull it out, it'd still be terrible. At least it'd be workable. But what you have to do is reach in between the card that you've stolen out and the envelope. And you have to pull the thing out. By the way, if you lose this, you can't do the trick anymore and you have to ditch it somewhere. They don't really give you any advice on that. So my thought was just put the pen in the pocket and leave it in there. And then you're in a position where you can then pull this pull this card out um, and, and then they can unfold it and it's their card. Um, then to reset it, you have to find wherever that thing is that you've ditched and you have to reset it. But this cannot be examined. There are so many better ways of doing a card to impossible oh, location. Even worse, because you can't examine it. No, you can't examine it at all. Um, anything. Paper clicked. John Kennedy's mystery box. There are a million different ways of achieving this trick that don't require so much fiddly. I cannot stress how fiddly this trick is. It is so fiddly. And then they, um, <laughs> it's, they're obviously trying to come up with as many different ideas for this as possible because they have this little idea for a mentalism trick where uh, they do the same sort of thing, but there's a piece of paper in there which has got something written on that they've, uh, they've predicted. And it's kind of like a double writing thing, but they're writing on a pack of cards. They're using a pack of cards for no reason. They're not having the card picked. They're writing on the back of a playing card. You're giving, being given information they're writing on the back of the playing card and then they're saying okay so you you know this is this is what you told me now let me just open up this and take out it's just ter it's terrible it is absolutely abysmal if there had never been a way to do a folded up card to impossible location before if there'd never been a way of doing that and it's a brand new concept then this would still get a bad review because it is so fiddly. It is so uncommercial. This thing will break within 15 seconds. It broke twice between me opening it, practicing it and doing it on the review show and I had to fix it twice. Luckily, they give you some extra bits and pieces to fix it, but it is going to break a hell of a lot. Like I say, even if it was groundbreaking, it would still get a bad review. But the bottom line is there are a million ways to get a folded card into an impossible location. Vision box too, um, any clarity box, any of the paragon boxes, any of these see-through boxes are a million times better. Or just a normal box, as I say, paperclip, Jay Sankey's paperclip. Anything is better than this. And, and the heat is just done at completely the wrong time. And the thing I really hate about it, like I say, is the fact that um, you have to get this thing off the envelope. Let's give you any advice. Oh, and by the way, if you're going to do, you know, I talked about the recurring thing on the, on, the tray, on the download. And it's like the same music over and over again. Yeah. If you're going to actually explain it that way and you're going to put words on the screen. So now you need to do this and there's a person's hands doing it. Now you need to do this. Maybe, just maybe, you should get the person that's editing the videos to run that through a spell check or run it through a grammar check because um, it's, it, 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 there were more mistakes in the text on the screen in 15 minutes than 
uh, yeah, I've seen in any magic product ever. Um, this is terrible. This is terrible. I mean, you didn't know any of this. I just showed you the trick. You watched the download afterwards, but you didn't, you didn't know any of this. I showed you the trick. And just on seeing the trick, what did you think? He hated it. He just hated it. It was like, oh, it's just terrible. And he wanted to examine the envelope and he couldn't. It's, it's dreadful. Sarah, who very rarely comments on magic, she said this was terrible. Sarah, what did you think of it? Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. It, what are you giving it? Minus one billion trillion. <laughs> Minus one billion trillion. Do me a favour, right? Go get the bin. Because this is the second product by Craziest. And uh, I'm never going to do this. I don't want to sit here fixing it anymore. I've got a million ways of achieving this thing. I'm going to get my little thing that I ditched in my pocket. I'm going to get the instructions. Right, have you got it? This gets zero percent from me. It gets minus trillion billion percent from him. It's the second craziest product that gets thrown in the trash. Okay, so review number three. We've got Sky Cube by Julio Montoros. Now I had to change this a bit. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Look, Ryland's going to perform this. He was super excited. Super. He was super excited when this came through because you love cube magic, don't you? Um, let's not give anything away right now. You were super excited. We've watched the download. We've learnt it. And we've changed the presentation, not the presentation, we've changed the handling a bit um, in order for Ryland to perform it. So I'm going to show you, you're going to perform it, right? Yeah. And then once you've performed it, we'll talk about how we've changed the handling a little bit and then what we think of the actual routine. Uh, but it's Skycube. Are you going to go for it? Yeah. Full presentation? I know that you, don't, don't, don't sound so, he's, he's actually depressed that I'm making him perform this trick. Look, get excited, show me a performance. Show everyone else a performance. I've got a Rubik's Cube. Yes, you have. And I've also got a handkerchief. Okay. And what I want you to do is I want you to examine a Rubik's Cube and give it a little mix. It is not the easiest cube in the world to mix. No. I tried it. I tried to solve it and I solved it, but it was dead hard. <laughs> okay, cool. It took me about 10 minutes. Fair enough. Because it's so hard to, to <laughs> I can't even turn it. <laughs> you get on with the trick and stop trying to solve the cube one handed. <laughs> get on with it. Yeah. So, examine your handkerchief. Yeah, handkerchief's good. Handkerchief's good. Okay. Right. Hold on to this when I get my magic wand. Okay. Which is a sharpie. Okay. What's your favourite colour? Blue. Blue. My favourite colour red, but let's go with blue. Open up. It's changed to blue! How amazing is that? That is brilliant, Roland. Yeah, let's try and take things a step further. Okay. Okay. Look. You need the handkerchief. Mm hmm. Right. Actually, let me get my magic wand. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What? Wow! You squished it. Yeah, but that takes me a step further again. Okay. You solved it's the really, cube. Yeah, because it's really easy to solve because it's flat. All you need to do is just quickly move the sticks around. Like... <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. Fair enough. Fair enough. And that is uh, what's it called? Sky cubes. That is sky cube. Uh, now we said we should talk about why we've changed the handling first of all. I think you can tell from his little thumb what he thinks of the trick. And you are a, a cube guy. You know, you take weekly cubing lessons from uh, Tom Crosby, and you um, you know you, you do pretty much every cube trick that I know. And you were really excited about this, but you didn't like it, did you? And we're going to. I want to know why you didn't like it as a bit of a cube expert in a second. But before we do that, let me explain why we changed it. Set the cube up with the gimmick, and we'll show them what we mean. Um, what, how the routine, it, it's not meant to use a handkerchief. They don't mention a handkerchief at all in the routine. What they do is they talk about having, it starts the same way, a cube is examined and mixed, and then they take it and they, uh, they hold it here, 
and uh, and shake it and it changes and this is what it looks like this is the, you get a little gimmick with it as well which is designed to get that sort of thing so it looks like it it changes and then the gimmick can be uh, stolen off so it can be examined the problem is the gimmick is very flimsy the viewing angles on the gimmick aren't very good. It doesn't look very deceptive at all. So we chose not to use the gimmick and we were trying to think of a way of actually making this practical. Uh, because the problem is, th the guy that's explaining this seems like a nice guy. Don't get me wrong, he seems like a nice guy. The guy that's created this, he talks over and over again about this is his first creation that he created six years ago. And you know, he's been doing this for six years. Uh, I think he's trying to convince himself to be honest, but he seems like a really nice guy. But he's got very little working knowledge of magic, or at least it comes across that way. Or at least he's not a very good explainer of magic. Because what you have to do in order to get this in play with the gimmick is you have to do a switch. And basically, it's a shuttle pass. You have to shuttle pass from one to the other. Now, shuttle passing two Rubik's Cubes... It's not an easy thing to do at the best of times. It would be better to use something like a crossing the gaze switch by Juan Tamaritz, but he doesn't talk about that. He just says, hey, this is what you need to do and ask them a question at the same time. Then when you've got this in play, it's not that, I know, I know. When, when you've got this in play, you do the change, and the problem is, as I say, the viewing angle, it doesn't look very good close up. I showed this to Sarah, and I was like, what does this look like? And she went, well, it doesn't look like a Rubik's Cube. And I did the change, and she was like, well, it's obvious what's happening there. So you can't do it close up. You can probably get away with it further I've got away. a problem on the second phase. Well, yeah, and I want you to talk about that in a second. But then, when you've actually turned this into a I'm blue cube... i about every single problem, and I've... About 10 okay, but well, I want to hear them. But first of all, can I just... So when you've got the blue cube, you then have to go back into your pockets. There's no justification for going back into your pockets ever. We added the pen thing. It doesn't use a pen. We added a pen to at least give some justification to go into, into your pockets. You go into your pockets, you have to ditch the gimmick. Uh, and then you bring this out, right? Um, Actually, I've got three problems. Uh, okay, okay. Um, there goes the gimmick. Do you want to put it back over there? Um, and then you have to basically... Mm -hmm switch this for this and the first idea he gives you is is to lap it and 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 it's like he doesn't even understand how lapping works he's like oh when i go to a gig i lap it when i go to a wedding i lap it and i have um uh, i have it and he grabs a tissue sitting on a sofa he grabs a, uh, a a cushion sorry he puts a cushion on the floor and he goes let me show you how to lap it and and that's the advice he gives just push a cushion on the floor and kneel down behind a coffee table and 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 just just scoop it off the table. That's his big idea. He then talks about, um, uh, what, what else does he do? Um, he talks about um, um, the other different ways to switch it, all of which are terrible. He, he explains this thing, which just looks awful. Um, when he, he talks about forcing the color blue, because obviously you need to force the color blue. And, and he says, oh, you can force the color blue. You can use the digital force bag. I'm like, that's designed to force a hundred. You wouldn't use digital force bag to force the color blue. Um, it's like, oh, most people say blue anyway. But if you want to do a force, um, hey, you could use digital force bag, or he does this no, pointing thing, which is terrible. Say blue. They can say any color they want. Well, you get force to say blue. Yeah, well, you've done Rubik's cube stuff more than anybody, or more than a lot of people, and you ask people a lot to say their favorite color. Blue doesn't come out that often, I think. Anyway, it's normally red or or white, and it's kind of like it, it, it was the worst. There was no presentation to it. There was no performance of it. Um, and, and the explanation was terrible and left me thinking that this guy just didn't have a clue about his own product. Um, that's it. And then to squish it at the end, he uses a uh, sort of a sort of thing, uh, sort of a, a sh another shuttle pass type thing, which I suppose is OK, but... It's just, it's, 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 it's just not very, it's just not good. I mean, the nice thing about it is it's a key ring, so you can have it on your key fob, uh, you can take it off, you can do the thing with it, you can put it back on your key fob, but it's, it's just not, it's not very good. It looks more exciting than it actually is. And to do the change, and they don't say this in the ad copy, naughty, um, but to do, they do this change in the trailer where they just throw it up in the air and it changes. To do that, you have to it, it, it make up separate gimmicks and it's, uh, even when he's explaining it, he's like, oh, this is very difficult. This is, this is good for social media. This isn't the easiest thing to do. Having watched what you need to do in order to do that change, it's not good for social media. It's a complete pipe dream that you just threw in so you could do that change on the trailer. Terrible. What's your problems with it? Well, I've got four problems. Okay, problem number one. Um, uh, it already looks flat before you flatten it. Yeah, I mean, the angles on this is terrible. So when you're going to flatten it like this... 
it's it's uh, it's not very good. You have to, yeah, I agree with that. It yeah. Really looks flat. Look at yeah. Uh, second problem, the gimmick's terrible. It is. It, the key fob broken us when we first started using it. The, oh, you mean the flap gimmick? Yeah. It looks nothing like a Rubik's Cube when it's on there. Yeah. Um, the actual change, you literally have to hold it from this sort of angle in order for them to, because only two sides are covered. Even, right, one other thing, actually. When he's demonstrating this, he completely forgot to edit the download. Because he's doing, he gets to the point. Fourth. Hang on. I've got one more. Just give me, I'm just, on point two, which you made about the gimmick. When he's explaining this, it doesn't work. And, and he goes, uh, he speaks in a, in a foreign language because obviously he's not English. He's speaking English when, he, when he's explaining it. But then he does this and it doesn't work. No, first of all, he can't find the gimmick. And he's talking to his friend off camera and he's blah, 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 blah. And I think he says something like, let's make sure we edit this out. Then he goes to, then he goes to perform the change so that he can explain it and it doesn't work. Then he goes to do it again, and so he talks again. Then he goes and does it again, and it doesn't work, and he waves his hands around as if to say, hey, whoever's editing this, can you take this out? And then on the third attempt, it does work, but he never even edited it out. There's like a six-minute section in there, six or seven-minute section of him just screwing up and speaking in a foreign language. Um, so it, that actually kind of says to me that the gimmick doesn't work, and it's one of these things where you keep filming it until it looks okay on camera, and then you sell it to people, and you expect magicians to buy it, thinking if they can't get it to work, it's their fault. Whilst in actual fact, it's a sub substandard gimmick that shouldn't have been released in the first place. That's point number two. What's point number three? Um... There was the flat thing, and it doesn't look flat. There was the gimmick being terrible. Was there anything uh, else you hate? There's, there's literally no point in going in your pocket. Why? Because, because literally, there's no. Po yeah, it looks. Like you have to keep going in your yeah, pocket a lot, don't you? It looks weird if you just go like. Um, if you keep on going in your pocket, it just looks weird. It does. I uh, completely forgot about the form. There was no justification for it, was it? Which is why you added the pen. Which is why we added the pen at least. Because yeah. I remember when. At least we've got a magic wand. At least we've got a reason to go in the pocket. But yeah, you know, it's just it's routine together. It feels like a routine that's been put together and a gimmick that's been put together and by somebody who doesn't have a clue fourth. about magic. Go on, what's the fourth? Um, if, if if you use a magic wand, if you do use a magic wand, uh, you might as well just leave, you can't leave it on the table. You've got to put it back in your pocket. Yeah, I know you hate that sort of stuff. He hates going into his pocket for anything. He's, he likes justifying stuff all the time. Um, I agree with that. Although we can't blame that one on him because he never even said use a magic wand in the first place. Mm. That was something that we threw in to try and at least justify it. Look, it's terrible. Let's stop talking about this. This is terrible. It's awful. It's abysmal. It's trash. It... Let's just leave it alone. Yeah, what are you going to give it? I'm going to give it 0%. I'm never going to do this. I want billion, trillion, gazillion. Yeah. Uh, oh, and by the way, you have to stick the stickers on the cubes as well. So I was there like for like an hour when you were in bed, just sticking stickers on cubes and on gimmicks and everything, just so I could actually show it and demonstrate it in the review show. Yeah, zero percent. Whatever he said, it's terrible. Don't buy it. Z one minus. One billion, trillion, gazillion. If you want to do something like this, get yourself a Rubik's Dream or a Rubik's 360 and, and, and use the mini shell from that. That's actually a well-made cube and you could achieve the same thing with Rubik's Dream without needing to go through this travesty of magicness. It's terrible, terrible. Don't buy it. So the final review is the Collusion Coin Ring Set. Uh, by Mechanic Industries. Now, I'm a big fan of Mechanic Industries. I use their cards. I use their coins. Uh, I've got a lot of their products. And a lot of people have been asking me about this. I, re I performed this on a few Magic Lives. This came out about a year, uh, probably about a year and a half ago now. And I've done a few different things with, on Magic Lives with this. And a lot of people were saying to me, well, what is it? So I thought I'd actually do it in the review show. Um, so what you actually get with this set is you get a few different things. Now, the first thing that you get is you get a ring. Uh, this is the ring, and it comes in a lot of different sizes, and it's a really beautiful ring to do any manipulation with. I've seen rings like that. Mm. You've got... Exactly, because, yeah, I've, I've done this for a lot. This is actually my working close-up set, this is. Uh, in fact, when I go out and perform, I actually have uh, a ring. I've got a bigger size, so I can have it on my thumb. I actually use it as a thumb ring. Um, and the reason I use it as a thumb ring, just in case you're interested, is because if I have it anywhere else, it affects coin magic. Uh, because the coins will clink against the ring, but if I have it on the thumb, it doesn't. So um, you also get a ring, a coin, that matches 
uh, the ring. So a lot of the Garrett Thomas stuff that Garrett Thomas does on his Opius set, you can actually do with this as well. Um, you know, you can turn a ring into a coin, turn a coin into a ring. I'll show you some of that stuff in a bit. Uh, you also get this chain, and this is a really nice chain uh, to do ring on string on. Uh, it allows you to do ring on string really, really nicely. The idea is that, that you can have this around your neck if you want to. I tend not to because it doesn't fit my style. Why am I, I choking? I do have Be it. Careful. Be careful. I do have it in my pocket. So it's a really nice set. It comes in this little bag. You can keep it nice and safe. And there is literally so much that you can do with this. There is so much. The download that comes with it. Uh, covers so many different slides, so many different routines. There's beginners, there's an intermediate, there's advanced. You go, uh, they go through like a nice coin on ring set. Uh, sorry, a nice coin uh, ring on on, um, on on chain. Uh, they go through some transpositions. They go through some changes. Um, so what I typically do when I do this is uh, I do a few different things. So I'll do some ring manipulation with this. Uh, I'll do some simple ring manipulation normally to open. I'll have this on my thumb and I'll say, hey, let me show you something with this ring. Can you examine it for me? And I'll just do some really simple stuff where it jumps from one hand to the other, uh, jumps back onto my thumb, penetrates through the fingers. And then... Are you going to do a trick? I do this. I'm going to show them uh, something that I do right now. Um, Good. Let's... <laughs> Shut up. Let's... I'll do a trick right now. So I'll start with some uh, with some manipulation, some ring manipulation, some of the Garrett Thomas stuff a lot of the time and ring thing and some Greg Wilson stuff. But then I'll go into this sequence, which is a really nice sequence. I'll say to people, uh, this ring means a lot to me because this used to be a coin and I actually had it melted down uh, and turned into a ring. I can actually take this ring back in time uh, to when it was a to when it was a coin, you see, uh, or I can bring it back forward in time to when it's a ring. Now you probably missed that, so let me do that again for you. Watch the ring. I'm just going to do this, and I'm just going to have it turn right here into a coin, which is absolutely amazing. Thanks, Ben Williams, for that one. Or I can turn it back into the into the ring. I can keep doing it. You see, if I just turn that ring and rub it, I can turn it into a coin. If I rub it again, I can turn it back into a ring. I can keep going over and over again. But if I just take it and squeeze, I can turn it into a coin. One more, I can turn it into a ring one more time. I'll put it back onto my uh, my thumb. You can do the stuff with this set. There's explanations of how to actually pull um, coins out of the center of the ring. So you can do stuff like this, where you show a ring and a coin, and you you put the coin in the hand, and you take the ring and you just drop it and you say well the ring the coin looks like it's disappeared but it's actually inside the ring and the only way to prove this is to, uh, Too big for to it. drop it out through the bottom of the ring so you can do stuff like that uh, there's a lot of stuff they actually do with this um i combined stuff that's on the download uh, with stuff from Garrett Thomas and stuff of my own. Um, if you've ever seen my sponge routine, I actually got a second set of these so I could do, uh, I got a second coin so I could do transpositions. So I could do stuff like, look, I'll put the coin over there. I'll put the ring over here. Now I want you to watch if I just take the coin over here and squeeze, I can make them change places. Let me do that again. Look, the coin's here, the ring's here. If I put the ring over here and the coin over here and squeeze, I can make them Imagine change places. <laughs> Well, that would be good, wouldn't it? So, uh, and yeah, there's a nice little David Acker move that you can do with this where you say, look, watch the ring. Did you see it go uh, on my little finger over there? I know, right? And, and obviously you can do ring thing. You can do stuff like this, say go. Did you see it go on my thumb? So, so there's loads of stuff you can do with it. It's, it's, a, it's limited only by your imagination. The download gives you a whole bunch of ideas. I use this as an opener an awful lot when I'm doing walk around. Uh, I'll do like a two or a three minute routine with the ring, with the coin, uh, going in, going out, doing all that sort of stuff. Um, there is a finale to this as well, which I'll show you. Uh, and this is the best part of the How set. Stuff have you got in There's there? loads of stuff. I told you this is actually from my close up working set. Let me show you. Let me show you. So after I've done, this is the best part of collusion, by the way. This, I almost forgot to show them this. This is absolutely the best part of collusion. So you've got a gimmick which you have in your pocket and you ring it in at the end of the routine. So you've just done all of this stuff. So how I frame it, I do stuff with the ring. Then I go back and forth in time between the coin and the ring. Then I make the coin come out of the ring. I do a couple of sequences where the coin goes into the ring and comes out. And I say, well, we need a big finish. Every time you do magic, you need a big finish. So Ryland, uh, do me a favor, grab the top of the ring right there for me. Very good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the coin as well. I'm going to put the coin in here, squeeze really, really tightly. You can feel the two of them going together. And if I squeeze, can you feel that? Yeah. What I've actually done is I've actually taken the ring and the coin 
and fuse them into one. Have a look at that and show the camera and I'll actually see that that is a real, and it's such a weird object. They want to examine that. And the nice thing is, from a reset point of view, this is as good as a jumbo coin. And what I mean by that is it is as good as a jumbo coin. When you do this, everybody stops. They want to look at this moment right here because it's incredible. But all I have to do with a soul stone tumble change is I can do this and I can separate them and they can examine it again. And then as I put this ring back into my pocket, I'm also ditching the gimmick and uh, so the gimmick gets put away and then this goes back onto my thumb and I'm reset. So I can do like a five minute routine, which starts, as I say, uh, with some ring manipulation, then transpositions between a ring and a coin, then a coin going into a ring and coming out of a ring and finishing off in this moment. And then I almost do that second check. So I do this and I let them see this and they examine it. And then I, I don't even mention the fact that they're coming apart. Uh, when I'm in this position, I then say, let's try one more thing. I I'm gonna grab a pack of cards. And as I say that, I just separate them magically. So the two of them separate. And I just put the, the, uh, the coin away in my pocket and I put the ring back on my thumb and I don't make any deal of it. And people just like do a double take when they see this. So this is an amazing set. Uh, not enough people are doing this in my opinion. If you want to ring a set that has everything that you need, that you could do like a 20 minute act if you want one. If that's too big for you, I'll get you one. I'll get you a small one. Um, that's part of my working set. You know, that. It's going straight back in my close up case. It get off the rings right now. If you, it's going in my pocket. No, I don't care. Brian, stop it now. Get off my stuff. I will tell you off. <laughs> Right, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's getting 100% from me. I've been doing this for over a year. It's my opener and walk around. I absolutely love this. It really grabs people's attention. There's so much magic that's happening very, very quickly. Well, as you wanted to steal mine, I'm guessing I know your mark. We tell everyone what you're thinking of it. 100%. It's 100%. It's just a I fun... I barely try to steal things. I know. He's going to... And I do the steal. And, and then I'm going to wake up before you and I'm going to steal it off you. I'll be hiding it. You won't even know where to find it. Right, it's... Are a... you close up case? Can we move on, please? <laughs> <laughs> It's 100% for me, it's 100% from him. It's absolutely brilliant. Not enough people are doing this. It's a fun thing to practice. If you want to get something Everybody really cool... Everybody buy it. Yeah, everyone buy it. It's really good. There you go. And that's another review show in your bag. One day you're going to go through the floor. It is indeed another review show in the bag. Thank you very much for watching. Two amazing items there. Uh, I know that Magneto is going to go into my act. By the and first by one. the second one. And the two middle ones. Don't buy. If you do buy them, just shove it in a bin straight away. Good advice. <laughs> There you go, what he said. Um, so make sure you follow us on, uh, follow him on YouTube. He's the Kid Magician, puts videos up twice a week. Follow, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. I'm going to be back tomorrow with the magic stuff and on Friday with the magic rant. And we'll be back next Wednesday with another review show. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. And we'll see you again soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. -bye.